ready? Let's see, we've talked about Capcom, Konami, Data East, Psycho. So who shall we discuss this time? Ah, how about Ban Presto? You know, the people that made anime figures and such. They've actually published a ton of games, and have come across some of their arcade titles, like Pretty Soldier Sailor Moon and Macross Plus. But they've also published and developed a lot of console games, a big one being the Super Robot Wars series. I've never played these games, but there are a shitload of them, and I hear people talk about them a lot in my friend circles. Before Ban Presto got absorbed by Bandai Namco, this company did develop and publish a lot of titles, so they definitely have a lot of experience. And I got a game I want to share in this video that is going to display the expertise this publisher brought to the beat em up genre in the 90s. Let's take a look at Ban Presto's Guardians and see what they and developer Winkysoft brought to the arcade table. Spoilers, it's actually pretty fucking awesome. There is no opening dialogue or pre-context. In fact, there's no story whatsoever, so there's nothing to talk about there. We do get an opening showcasing our heroes, striking poses, punching the screen, displaying their, uh... Uh... <laughs> okay. Like I was saying, looking cool, kicking lots of fire, and oh lord. Okay, it's not a big secret. Aside from violence, sex sells. This was a big tactic back in the day, used to attract the target video game audience of the time, which was teenage boys with uncontrollable hormones. You don't really see stuff like this as much nowadays, and I get it. It doesn't bother me that we're moving away from hot chicks dressed in ridiculous clothing being one of the forefronts of gaming marketing today. I care way more how the game plays over what eye candy a dev wants to inject. But, I'm not going to sit here and pretend or lie and say that I was immune to stuff like this as a young man. Nah, this shit would totally work on me. I'm not above admitting that. And I mean, it's not like I would try the same marketing tactic with, say, thumbnails or anything like that. That would be silly. The credits are entered, and we're brought to a character select screen, and Guardians offers a big cast for just a beat-em-up game. We have Kuro Kishi, a blonde, gun-toting woman that I swear looks to be inspired by Barbarella. Rue, a scar-faced, mystic charm user. Tolks, your stereotypical roid-infused muscle daddy. Skull by Yule, some kind of creature with crab-like features that honestly reminds me of War from TMNT Tournament Fighters. Maybe they're cousins or something. P. Belva, a basic cyborg robot dude. Zeldia, a bird chick with big ol' claws. Jinrai, a wild-haired ninja swordsman, cladded in pink, and you don't fuck with a dude that wears pink. And Garulian, who looks like what would happen if Shar Azabal quit piloting a mobile suit to take up a life as a gym rat. I was really impressed with just the amount of characters there are. I mean, there's eight in total. I think the most I've seen up to this point is six in the X-Men arcade game. And the character designs and graphics just from the intro and character select screen are awesome. There's great detail to these characters, and I love the style. And we need to take a look at the additional information provided on the character screen as they transition into the gameplay. Normally in a beat-em-up, the demo screen will show you what inputs to do, or the arcade cabinet itself will detail the moveset. In Guardians, as you hover over each character, you're shown their moveset, accompanied by a small image of what they look like. This is absolutely awesome and smart. Not only does it help those like myself that don't have access to the arcade cabinet and have to play these games via Fightcade, but you immediately understand how the moves work just by looking at the pictures. Also, it just looks cool as hell. Every character has the same inputs. Hold A, then move down to up. Hold A, then move side to side. A and B together. A and C together. And then C. A is your basic attack. You mash it to perform a combo. But even the simple attack input has some variation to it. For example, you hold up while mashing the attack, and the combo will have variation, like a different animation. The B button performs a jump, and you can attack in the air. And there are also two different attack moves. One is a basic jump attack, and the other is more of a downward attack, and some characters can actually juggle this move. 
The C button is a range attack that is mainly used to stun your opponents, giving you or the other player an opportunity to attack, which is unique because I'm pretty sure I've never seen this mechanic in a beat-em-up before. As you can see, I haven't even finished going into the combat mechanics, and you can start to understand the depth that went into this. Moves either have variations through inputs or based on which character you choose, so even though all the inputs are the same, their action can be different per character. For example, the vertical special could have the character starting the attack on the ground and moving into the air, like a dragon punch that you'd see in Street Fighter. Or they could stay stationary on the ground, making the move more effective for enemies that are jumping towards them. The horizontal special could have the hero going clear across the screen, or have a big attack right in front of them. The AB special is used to clear out crowds around you, which is the classic beat-em-up staple. And the AC specials would do massive damage surrounding a hero, or clear out all the goons in front of you across the whole screen. The special moves use resources from a power meter, and the AC special will also take health away. To regain the power meter, you just need to stand in neutral and power up DBZ style. Then let's turn up the heat! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and one of my personal joys for a beat-em-up game, you also have variety in the throw mechanics. You could just chuck a foe, perform a combo, or jump in the air and smash the fuck out of them on the ground. And better yet, you could smack them a few times first, then slam them to hell. And on top of that, there are fucking air throws in this game! I should have said the poet. So beautiful. And yes, you could throw bosses in this game, which just automatically gives any game extra kick ass points. I want to take a moment to say this. If you want to make a good and badass beat em up game, this is how you fucking do it. You give the players a large moveset to perform. It takes a classic one button mashing system and expands it to something that makes you forget you're playing a beat em up. Almost as if it's a beat em up fighting game hybrid, and that is just perfect for me. The combat in this game is just so damn satisfying and flat out fun. And did I mention you could start a hit string and combo into your specials? This is just so fucking cool. The amount of variety this game provides for combat is just absolutely godlike for a beat em up. Okay, I'm done creaming my pants over the combat for now, so let's walk through the game. After you select your characters, you interrupt these baddies having a smoke break. Blue Man here looks like he's having some very elegant downtime, and we start stage one. As far as progression in Guardians goes, it's the same as most beat-em-ups. Move to the right, beat the shit out of bad guys until the stage is clear. There are objects to break that drop items that recover health, provide points, and there are some weapons, though I really feel with as awesome as the combat is in this game, this is actually a beat-em-up where weapons weren't really needed. I had such a good time with how the combat was that I actually would avoid picking up weapons as I progressed through the game. Graphically, this game looks great. The character and enemy sprites have amazing detail, and the backgrounds are pretty good as well. As far as enemy selection goes, we got bootleg Shinra soldiers, futuristic aerobics instructors, big dudes on hoverboards, these weird claw dudes that look like they should be in Power Rangers, Resident Evil dogs, these big alligator mutant guys that look like they were pulled straight out of Secret of Mana or something, and holy thick goddess Batman! Hello, what have we here? Okay, we made our way through the first stage and get to fight the first boss. <laughs> Fighting Lady Togro here is actually a great fight, but there's also cool shit happening outside of combat. Down in the foreground, you have a Shinra reject that just seems to be reporting and filming the fight, and in the background you can see the footage being broadcast. This is something I totally didn't need to be done, but it's just a cool, small detail that I really enjoyed and I wanted to share with y'all. After the boss is beat, the player gets to choose which stage to go to next. I always like the ability to pick a stage in a beat-em-up, because if I really like the game, it makes me want to go through it again to see the other paths I didn't pick. Once again, a small, unnecessary detail, but a welcome one for me. 
And Guardians does provide some bonus games in between some stages, like the shooting gallery, which reminded me of that one Terminator 2 arcade game. Now the boss fights themselves are pretty cool, as aside from Mrs. Togoro, you fight a vanishing ninja, a big old mech, and whatever the fuck this gross ass gnarly looking motherfucker is. And the game provides a somewhat boss rush at the end, which I always like. Now, the biggest criticism I would provide for the game is that the soundtrack really isn't all that impressive. It's not like it's terrible, but it's just generic, which is the best word I can use to describe it, and it's pretty forgettable. Another thing to point out is that this game is pretty easy when playing with two players. My friend and I really didn't die that much, and with all the moves at our disposal, it really felt like we had the advantage. As I stated back in my Metamorphic Force video, I don't really consider the game being easy as an issue. So many of these beat em up games are designed to be cheap as hell and drain your quarters, so playing one that gives the player so many options and moves to do just counts as a big win in my book. Guardians was just an absolute blast to play. The game just aims to provide great variety, whether it be through playable characters, combat, or stage selection. I'll be blunt. Guardians has possibly the best combat system out of any beat-em-up I've played so far. I now consider this game to not only be one of my favorite beat-em-ups of all time, but one of my favorite arcade games of all time. I really did love this game that much. I'm putting it up there with other games like Final Fight and X-Men that I've held dear in my high standard for so long. I just think Guardians is that damn good. If you like arcade games and beat-em-ups, this is a must-play and you won't regret it. Have you played Guardians? What did you think of it? Feel free to share your thoughts. Thank you for watching.